Hi everyone, Rich Crescenti here with another in our series of videos making music with Melodyne, and today we are discussing some next generation vocal riding. And what we mean by that is obtaining clear, consistent vocals right up front. This is one of the hallmarks of modern vocal production, and it will make the rest of your process of mixing easier. You'll be able to use effects such as compression and saturation and EQ more for uh, creative purposes and less for corrective purposes, and those tools will respond more consistently, making it easier to get the exact sound that you are looking for. Now some of this is done currently with clip gain and with automation, and those are still useful tools. However, Melodyne can do some of these things faster and easier than the other ways. Almost everything we're doing today can be done in Melodyne Assistant or higher. However, there are some tools I'll show you at the end that require the use of the sound editor, which is only available in Melodyne Studio. All right, so let's jump in and take a look right here. This is a song called Fool For Your Touch by Abby Amata, a singer-songwriter out of Brooklyn, New York. And we're gonna do a quick before and after to kind of show you where we started and where we can end up. So here is the unprocessed vocal. Traveling blind, yeah, without a clue. Very nice vocal, but some of it, the vocals are a little bit low towards the end right there. So this is an example of where we can end up. Traveling blind, yeah, without a clue. Let's hear that one more time, because I want you to really pay attention to how the second vocal stays on top of the music bed. Here's the original unprocessed. Traveling blind, yeah, without a clue. And here's the processed. Traveling blind, yeah, without a clue. Just sits right up on top. All right, so let me show you how I got there. Now, when we're discussing any kind of level like this, the very first tool you're gonna go to is the amplitude tool. If you right click to your context menu, you'll see right there we have our amplitude tool. And if you click on this, and then you can click on any blob, for example, you'll see this window that shows you the gain change right there. Now, in looking at this phrases that I have on the screen, you can see that some of these blobs are smaller, like this blob right here. So if you wanna just affect one or two blobs to make them louder or softer, you can always just bring those up just a little bit right there. I can also bring this one up as well. And this is great for just little spot touches here and there. Very, very useful. But sometimes what we want to do is smooth out a phrase and even out some words within a phrase. And this is where the amplitude macro, the leveler macro, becomes very useful. And that is this one right here. Now, let me explain a little bit how this works. What the leveler macro does is heavily dependent upon your note selection. Whatever group of notes you have selected, it looks at the highest amplitude and the lowest amplitude and finds a middle point. And then if you look at these two sliders right here, you can bring notes that are in the lower half up and you can bring notes that are in the upper half down. So again, note selection here is critical. And let me give you an example of that. If I drag all the way across and select this phrase right here, I've got a little tiny blob right there and another little tiny blob right there selected. And that can throw off the algorithm because it may see those as the low points. Easily solved enough, you can simply use the command key and just click to deselect that blob and deselect that blob. And now what we've got selected in these phrases are only the words that we wish to affect. Now I want you to watch these smaller words in the lower right hand corner right here when I use this macro. I can bring these notes up and down if you see that they are increasing in size when I do this. Now, extreme processing with this tool can bring up some, some guttural notes and some throat noises. So one of the things that I like to do is draw in a loop. As you can see, I've already drawn in a loop right here and let that play while I adjust the macro, listening for those kind of artifacts. Here we go. Traveling blind, yeah. Traveling blind, yeah, without a clue. Traveling blind, yeah, without. 
without a clue. Okay, now that right there is great, and I don't hear any artifacts in there at all. That sounds really great. We've really smoothed that out. However, how far you want to push this is heavily dependent upon the song, the genre, the vocalist, the vibe, all of those things. So a technique that I sometimes use, especially with a gifted singer like Abby, is I will bring up all of the low notes to make sure that they're sort of consistent level at the bottom and then not affect the top end. And that way when she pushes, when she really goes for it on the louder words, you get that effect of her doing that right there. Okay, great. Now that's one set of tools that I really like to do. And sometimes we'll have a different era where we'll have uh, a problem in one part of the word. Like for example, this word, yeah, right here. Let me double click, let's hear this. Yeah, with the... Now you hear how she kind of swings up into this word, yeah, right here. Now a great way that I like to solve this is with the fade tool. And this exists right underneath the amplitude, it's right there. And oftentimes people think the fade tool is really just for fade ins and outs, but you could actually change the envelope of that fade. For example, on this word right here, I can draw in this fade and I'm getting it right to about the, from the beginning to about where it reaches its peak amplitude. And then I can click on this fade and drag up. And you'll notice that actually sort of makes the, the swing move to its ampl uh, top amplitude faster. So let's give this a listen right here. Here is uh, without it. Yeah, without a clue. And then turning that back on, listen to that word, yeah. Yeah, without a clue. You can hear that that word, yeah, just hits that much more consistently. Let's hear this with uh, and without the music. So here's without the processing. Traveling blind. Yeah, without a clue. And here's with that. Traveling blind. Yeah, without a clue. I like that. That just means that word, yeah, just is that much more consistent right from the very beginning of it. Now, another way that I like to do this involves using a, a little trick technique that I have developed, and it works really, really well on words like this word right here, this word clue. If you take a look at this, this word clue hits and then sort of slowly fades out. Let's listen to this. Yeah, without a clue. You can hear it sort of tail off there at the end. All right. So... The hack that I've developed for this is really unique, right? We can click on this right here and hit Command C, and that copies that word. And usually in Melodyne, when you're copying and pasting, it is to replace one word with another word. But there's something unique that you can do, which is to copy this and then click anywhere else and hit Command V, and it pastes a copy right on top of the other word. And so now what I can do with this copy that exists right on top, let me show you. If I grab my pitch tool, you can see there is another copy of that word right underneath there. What I can do is come over here to my fade tool and fade all the way in. So now what we have is the original word and then a copy of the word on top that fades in and that counteracts the original word fading out, right? Let's hear this uh, unprocessed starting off with uh, the processing off. Yeah, without a clue. Okay, and here is with the changes that I made. Yeah, without a clue. That it might be a little too much right there, and if it is sometimes, that's easy enough to solve. I can go to my amplitude tool and just pull that one down just a little bit right there, and you can see how much I've changed it. Let's pull that down just a little bit, and let's hear that again. Yeah, without a clue. Nice. This is great. Now, we do have a little bit of an issue here sometimes, which is there's one word on top of the other, and that can create a little bit of a problem if you have the wrong blob selected. Easily enough solved, you can always right-click and come over here to Select Special, and you will see Rotate and Select Hidden Notes. That will just take, if one word's on top of the other, it will switch those two. You can also actually go into your Preferences and come over here to your Shortcuts, if you look in here, you can type in rotate and you'll see rotate and select hidden notes, it's shift H. So now you can use that, shift H, to switch between those two blobs right there, like so. Easily enough done. Okay, great. 
Now, there's another type of situation we may come across where a word really has two distinct levels, and that's like this word right here. Let's give this a listen. But I'm glad long. You can hear how the, at the end of the word glad, she dips down to another level right there. That's not really a smooth, consistent drop off. It's like one level and then another level right there. So I'm gonna do something here that is a very cool technique. You'll come over here to your note separation tool. And let me zoom in a little bit right here. And what I'm looking for is really for where that drops off, right? So I'm gonna click right where that note starts to drop off right there. And now that I've separated those, I'm gonna take this second part of this note and just make this arbitrarily louder. And here's why. When we really zoom in, you'll see once you adjust the amplitude, you get this gold line right here, which is your amplitude transition. This is very useful for smoothing out a transition in between two blobs that are of different amplitudes. Now that I have this here, I can actually smooth this out and get more consistent levels. Now you may be tempted to just pull it up all the way, but you'll see we don't want that. What I'm really looking for right here is to get a smooth, consistent level. So what I'll do is I'll move back and forth between these two tools, making sure that I get kind of the exact consistent level that I'm looking for. Okay, and then I might come to my pitch tool and just move that up a little bit right there so that it's in line. And I may even smooth out that pitch transition a little bit. Let's zoom out a little bit right here and let's hear again the original. But I'm glad long as you're okay, and now here is the processed version we made. But I'm glad long as you're so much more consistent all the way across in that word right there. That's really nice. Okay. Now there's one last technique that I wanna talk about today, and this involves the sound editor, which again is only available in Melodyne Studio. And I'm gonna open this right here. And within your sound editor, you actually have uh, this slider right here, which is your dynamics slider. Right? And this works differently than the other amplitude tools. And this is an important thing to understand because what this does is it actually alters sort of the decay of that word and can either uh, expand the dynamic range of that word or compress the dynamic range of that word right there. Now with the sound editor, selection and clips uh, are very, very, very important. The sound editor generally applies to every single blob that is in there. It applies to the whole track. However, I can make sure that I separate a region like this, uh, and that's easy enough to do, right? You can just go over here to edit, and then I'm gonna come to my, uh, my menu right here, and I'm gonna choose separate clip. You can also just use the quick keys if you know that right there. But now that this is a separate clip, I can go in here, and as long as I have one note within that clip selected, these changes to my sound editor will only apply to that clip. All right, so let's say I wanna use this, this first half of this clip right here, this word right here. I'm gonna hit B to separate inside Pro Tools and make sure I just have this one word selected. And what I can do now is as this plays, I can lower this slider to decrease the dynamic range of these phrases right here. So let's give an example, right, as this plays. Traveling blind. Traveling blind, traveling blind. That's nice. That really kind of smooths all those words out right there. Oftentimes with this dynamic slider, a little goes a long way, so you can always use the option control to get some fine control over that right there. Great, now that we've applied that, again, we can listen to our entire passage right here, like so. Here is without any processing at all. Traveling blind, yeah, without a clue. And here is with the changes that I've made. Traveling blind, yeah, without a clue. That vocal just sits better on top of that music bed right there, giving you a much more upfront and consistent vocal. Hope you've enjoyed this today. Thanks.